think I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about losing a fight. Like um, I get challenged to fights on the internet like every day. People send me messages and emails and and uh, just all all kinds of messages challenging me to like fights. Come, uh, just telling me how how badly they would beat me up. And and sometimes sometimes I read these and I think what what would actually happen if I showed up to this fight. And occasionally, occasionally these guys will have videos of themselves fighting, and most of them are just absolute jokes. But I think to myself, what would happen if if I fought this guy? And I, I started to ask myself these questions. Well, if I lost, how would I lose? And I think that's a super important question for combat sports athletes to ask themselves when they are nervous. If I lost, how would I lose? Because I think you know how you would lose. Like if your grappling sucks, you're probably going to be exploited by a superior grappler. If you don't know how to box, you're probably going to get knocked out by the guy who does and so on. So, so what that tells you is how you need to improve. If, if you can, if you have this fear of losing, it's because you know how you're going to lose. And so because of that, we know how to become competent enough so that we don't so that we can gain the confidence that we can actually win. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that word even better than, than clarity. It, you know, it come, like confidence comes from confidence. And confidence, well, you know, it can, only gain, it can only be gained through practice, right? Practice, 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 and that's where you get that confidence, and that's where, that's where it becomes confidence. And then from there, um, I wouldn't say that you have that um, <clears throat> invincible mindset, so to speak, but you know that anywhere the fight goes, like you'll be, you'll be fine. And then, of course, yeah. you're going to try to dictate and, and come up with strategies and tactics to take the fight where you want to go to exploit the other's weakness and all that. that that's great. But, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's something uh, I forgot where, how the conversation started. But, uh, oh, yeah, you were talking about how losing is important to know um, know how to lose, I think. Yeah. And it, you just, and also off. how you're going to lose. I mean, th think about this, like think about your training partners, like your best training partners, like the guys who can beat you when, when you, uh, train the guys who can throw you any way they want. Um, the guys who can pin you, the guys who can submit you, right. Think about one, one of these guys. And when you're going to train with him, do you ever think to yourself, like, oh, man, he's, he's probably going to beat me and he's probably going to do it with, with this move or that move or this strategy? Does that, does that thought process ever happen? 100%. I got a guy right here, right now. This guy, I noticed that um, when I fight him, I'm always worried because I know he has, like, this is what he does to me. This is, what he, you know, this is the couple of things that he does to me all the time, and he yeah. does it when he wants to. And, and so because of that, I always have this fear of attack, of, of, of putting on, of going for it 100% in my attacks, mm -hmm. you know. And then when I, when I do that, because I hesitate, I go half, I'm halfway in, but then I stop. Then from there, he counters me. Yeah. But then, I, and he even told me that. He's like, because I asked him, hey, man, like, I have a really hard time. I'm always, you know, like, what do you, what do you think is, is wrong with my judo? This guy used to be on the national team, and mm -hmm. uh, you know he's uh, he's, at, he's what 170, 170 pounds, but like all muscle. He has like no fat on him yet, you know, and super yeah. explosive. One of those athletes. And he told me, well, the problem with you, he told me, and he was referring to me. The problem with you is that you come in half, like you you come in halfway. You come in with not a hundred percent. And he said, if you do that to me, I could feel it. So if you stop halfway through your movement or even like even 70% through your movement, you're, you're going three quarters of the way, let's say, but then you hesitate, you're screwed because I'm going to, I'm going to feel it and I'm going to counter you right there on the spot. And that's what's happening to you. So just he said, you have to go the, uh, 100 karate, make it wash just like grape. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the grape. And that's it. So I'm the great with this guy. And, and he told me with me, you got to go 100%. So I, I, so I won't be able to counter you. Worst case, you miss. 
and then you reset again or you just follow up with another attack. But if you half-ass it, I'm going to get you. And that's what's happening with you. So he said, you know, so now it's, uh, it's still a mental block that, I, uh, that I'm working on for, for this particular guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this guy, this guy really like, uh, there's two guys on my clubs who, who, who had this effect on me. And I'm still working on it, right? Because yeah. these guys are a couple but of isn't steps. That interesting? Uh, like before you even, before you even um, get on the mat with them, you know exactly how they would beat you, right? Like, they're not going to surprise you with how they beat you, are they? They're not going to pull out some crazy flying, triple upside down move you've never seen before. They're probably oh, going to no. use a strategy that you've, you've already succumbed to, right? It's the same 3-4 techniques he does on me all the time. All the time. It's just yeah. that, you know, it, it's not like he's doing any magic tricks or anything like that. Like, okay, the first time I fought, first couple of times I fought him, like, I didn't know what his uh, usual attacks are. But now I know. So that's the thing, even when you know, but because yeah. you have this, you know, he's, he's, because he's done it to you so many times, you think that it's going to be like that again. And because of that self, self-defeating uh, belief, if, yeah. uh, you know, then yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I, I had this experience with, uh, this experience with one of my training partners, my, my friend Carlos, he's a, he's a jujitsu brown belt. And he's got this death grip on his right hand. But if he gets a hold of your lapel, he can just do horrible things to you. And I noticed <laughs> something. Every time he grabbed my lapel with his right hand, my, my left lapel with his right hand, he would always do the same thing. And so at first I felt that like sense of dread every time it was time to grapple with Carlos. And I was like, Oh man, he's going to grab me with his death grip with his right hand and he's going to get that lapel and he's going to do that thing again. But then I had this thought one day, what if I grab his right hand before he can grab my lapel? <laughs> and so I tried it and I grabbed his right hand and then I'm able to arm drag him. I'm like, whoa, that happened differently this time. So for, for a while, I kept thinking, I kept envisioning me losing the same way, if you will. Like he's going to grab the lapel, he's going to do the thing. And then I'm going to lose. He's going to grab the lapel. He's going to do the thing. Then I'm going to lose. But when we can addre address the root of the problem, like, you know, if the problem is just that right hand, that right hand is the big enemy. If we can find a way to neutralize that and build in a, an offensive strategy around that. And as your training partner point out, don't approach it halfway, but go all in. We can find a way around that. Now, not saying... That's going to be easy, but uh, and they're going to adapt around your adaptation, which is what forces growth, of course, because eventually you'll, you'll figure out a way to you know beat this guy to the punch, if you will. And then he's going to figure out a way to compensate for the way you compensated for his strategy. And he's going to build a new strategy. Then you're going to have to build a new one, right? And it goes back and forth. And it's an amazing process. All right, because oh, as soon yeah. as I arm drag my friend Carlos, what did he do? He adapted his game plan. So when I tried arm dragging again, he adapted, right? And so I had to come up with a new strategy. I'm going to attack him on the other side, you know. And then suddenly he's defending both sides. And then, you know, you, you, it just becomes more complex, right? Yeah, because absolutely. We have to. But it's a beautiful thing because when we fight somebody new, somebody that has not adapted to us, suddenly we're the better fighter in that situation because we've been through all of those possible scenarios. And so they don't surprise us. Yeah, and so instead yeah, of just focusing on how we're going to lose, we can then focus on how we're going to win.